What's up guys, Kaz here, and today I'm going to be walking you through 10 steps on how to go from a new account to mid-game in 30 days. Now, this is going to be a little bit different than my normal content. Um, I really wanted to kind of dig down and go deep into the step-by-steps on how to actually go from a brand new account and progress through GB10, through TOA100, Dragons B10, and uh, Raid 4 so that you can get make your way into mid game and so a little backstory first in my first account that i made i made a lot of mistakes and i focused on a lot of the wrong things and this kind of put me behind um, like crazy and it wasn't until i started watching influencers like shredded puzzle uh, like childish that i really began to see my account progress and grow and uh, a big shout out to childish uh, because his videos, um, especially the Educate and Dominate, um, was really uh, especially helpful to me in uh, helping me to grow as a player and it helped me to reevaluate my approach to the game and become a much more effective player overall. And I'll put a link down in the description below to his Educate and Dominate series. Um, go check it out. Um, I think you guys will find that really helpful. Uh, but long story short, I took uh, what I had learned uh, from these different uh, influencers and began to progress my account like crazy. And I wanted other, I wanted to help other players to not repeat the same mistakes that I did. Um, and so my wife, uh, who was my girlfriend at the time, and I started a guild together, and we began to grow. And uh, as we grew as a guild, I began to see the need for uh, just somewhere for early game players to go to where they could uh, start growing, where they could develop. And uh, which is, by the way, the reason why I continue to make content on YouTube is I, I really just want to help those early and mid game players uh, progress their accounts. Uh, so anyway, I created a second account in order to create an early game farm guild uh, for the Rios and Paku community. And at uh, this time, I focused on the right things. So by the end of 30 days on this brand new account, um, I had a 52nd GB10 team. I had a TOA normal 100 team. Um, I was able to clear Dragons B10 in two minutes, and I was able to consistently farm Raid 4 for grinds. And all of this was done completely free to play. And so I want to kind of pass on that strategy to you and help you progress your account as well. So let's dive right in and we will go through 10 steps that I took to go from a new account to mid game in 30 days. Step number one is to complete scenario, all of it. So when I say complete scenario, that means that you go from the beginning of the game and you clear the Cheruka remains because once you clear the uh, Chiruka remains, you're gonna be you're gonna receive a vampire and blade rune set for a damage dealer that's already powered up to plus 15. It's all six stars, and uh, quite frankly, it's not a bad rune set, especially when you're early game. And so this is gonna go on your fodder farmer. Um, and so unless you have uh, pulled a uh, uh, like a nat five uh, wind or water you're going to want to make Lapis your six-star farmer. And which brings me to step number two, six-star your farmer. And so preferably this is a wind or water unit that you're going to be able to use later in uh, GB10. And then you're going to want to take this farmer and you're going to use that farmer to six-star Lorne and Bella. And so once you've completed that, um, you're going to want to join a farming guild. And so to do that, all you have to do is, well, you can either uh, go into the regular chats and ask someone if, um, if there's a guild that you can join, or um, you can just go down into community and there should be a link there uh, on the left. I, I can't do it, but there should be a link there where you can click on it and join a guild. And that's going to be especially useful. So your third step is to join a farming guild and you want to participate in every area that you possibly can in the game. And if you are doing, uh, doing this right, 
Um, you should be able to, even as an early game player, one or two days into your account, you should still be able to pick off one or two uh, guild battle or siege defenses in every fight. And so, uh, and you're also able to do everything in the labyrinth as well. Uh, for example, within two days, I was able to clear uh, every stage of the labyrinth on easy, and there were a few stages I was able to clear on normal. And this is going to also aid you in getting runes and grinds uh, to boost your stats. And you will want to begin uh, farming those uh, guild points in order to do some shopping. So in the guild shop, what you're going to want to look for is the first thing you want to buy every week is a 5 star rainbow mon. This is going to help you make 6 star monsters. Um, bar none, this is absolutely necessary. No questions asked. You got to do this. This is going to help you progress so much. So you buy that first. It's 150 guild points. The second thing you're going to want to start investing in is Ifrit pieces. Now, that the Ifrit pieces aren't going to come into play during uh, this tutorial. Uh, just simply because it takes five weeks to summon an Ifrit, and I'm taking us from new account to mid-game in 30 days, so we wouldn't have far um, farmed an Ifrit quite yet. Uh, but he is going to be absolutely essential for you later as you develop, so you absolutely want to start collecting the Ifrit pieces. And then one other thing that you're going to want to get early on is all the way in the back corner here of the... Uh, of the guild shop is you're going to want to buy the guild magic shop and this is where you're going to be able to uh, purchase things like grinds you're going to be able to get pieces for nat fours that you're going to need through the game you're going to occasionally uh, be able to buy mystical scrolls some legendary pieces light dark pieces so this really is a good investment so get this get your rainbow mon get your effort pieces beyond that uh, start saving and uh, you can begin work working on your flags but uh, those three things are the bare minimum all right and for the second part of step three here uh, I kind of lumped it together because uh, it's really kind of PvP overall um, so in addition to joining a farming guild you're gonna want to start uh, participating in arena and in particular you're going to want to uh, do your rivals every day uh, because that's going to get you, uh, I believe, like 27 crystals every day just by doing your rivals every day. And in addition to that, um, you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to start farming glory points and attacking uh, people that just have really weak defenses. Now, in order to get to those people that have really weak defenses, you're going to need to set a weak defense yourself. Um, otherwise, you're going to start looking at defenses that look like mine. And uh, there's no way if you're in the first 30 days of your game that you're going to be able to take something like this on. So when you go to uh, the arena, you know, you're going to want to set an easy defense, maybe something like this. And what that's going to do is it's going to encourage players to attack you and drop your rank. And uh, one of the biggest mistakes I made early on is that I was a tryhard. Uh, right from the very start, I always like to be the very best. I like to climb that ladder. I like to uh, um, exert my dominance, you know, whatever you want to call it. And I, I like to, to, to put in my all to what I'm doing. And little did I know that by uh, trying hard and putting on the strongest defenses that I could, that I was actually hindering my own progress. And I was actually able to climb that ladder much less quickly because... Um, I, I wasn't properly investing in my account. And now the reason you want to do this is because you want to be able to farm glory points. Now, the glory points, if you go to the shop, um, are points that you can use to invest in uh, towers. Now, the first thing you want to buy every week, hands down, is this right here, your devil mon. It's a free skill up for every, any monster that you have. I would save them up for nat 5 monsters or natural 5 star monsters. I wouldn't invest them in a 4 star monster. Maybe the only exception to that would be is if you pulled like a Lucian and uh, and you wanted to skill that monster up to maybe uh, make him a little bit more effective. That might be kind of the only exception I would have to that rule early on is uh, scaling up a Lucian. But other than that, save these up because they're going to be absolutely essential for you later. Uh, but get one of these every single week without fail. And beyond that, you're going to want to start investing in towers. 
Now, this is something I did not do early on. Uh, when I first started playing, I absolutely, uh, I avoided Arena for the most part after the first couple weeks, quite frankly, because I went up against all these hard defenses, and I was like, why in the world are all these level 50 monster, uh, level 50 players attacking me? There's no way for me to beat these guys. Why even try? And I just kind of got discouraged, and, uh, you know, little did I know, I could just set a weak defense and tank my defense, and tank my rating, and, uh, you know, even p players at, like, level 20 and 30 uh, was going to be able to attack me, and I was going to be able to tank my rating that much more and be able to uh, attack much weaker defenses. But I didn't know that early on. Another thing I didn't know was to invest in towers. What I did was probably the dumbest thing any player could do. I invested in these, and that is probably the dumbest thing you can do in this game. Reason being is because for a chance to get a monster, you are trading, uh, you're, you're trading in permanent stats on all of your monsters. And so I didn't know this until later, uh, but getting these scrolls is a waste. Put, to put it into perspective, if you get the uh, towers, you're going to, by default, be able to clear these dungeons a lot faster. And if you're clearing the dungeons faster, over time, you're going to be able to get more resources, which includes these uh, mystical scrolls. And so it really is counterproductive. And as a result, because I spent so much time not leveling up my towers, um, I'm way behind the curve. Um, right now, I'm at about 1400. Uh, so sometime this week or next week, I should be able to get that last, uh, that last upgrade into speed. And then I'm going to start working on my attack. Uh, but... Uh, you're going to want to start working on these towers. The speed tr uh, speed tower is one of the first ones you're going to want to start investing in. Another one you're going to want to invest in is going to be the crit damage one. And then the other one I would say you probably want to invest in. And this one's a little controversial. Um, but I personally believe in the defense one, the guard stone. And the reason being is that a lot of players tend to focus on HP. Um, but especially when you're looking at uh, TOA and Giant Speed 10, um, this e little bit of extra defense uh, could be the difference uh, between being able to tank a counterattack and getting one-shotted by the Giant. And so I'd recommend investing in those three primarily, uh, but invest pretty equally amongst all of your, uh, your towers. Uh, just so you can be growing your stats, but obviously you're going to want to prioritize speed and crit damage first. Step number four, you need to go into uh, scenario and you're going to go to uh, Mount White Dragon and you're going to farm four star or five star swift sets from hell and you're going to do that using your farmer. So either water or wind is going to be perfectly fine here. And you're going to use that farmer to get swift sets. Um, and you're going to need at least three swift sets to start you off with. And uh, so the reason I say this is because you are going to need speed in order to clear GB10. And so if you look at a uh, four star speed slot to swift room, um, this, the four star speed can go up to 30 speed when maxed at plus 15 the five star version can go up to plus 39 speed. So five star is preferable, uh, but I know RNG doesn't always like to give you what you want. Uh, so four star is going to do for now. Um, you're, you'll be able to replace those runes later. And when you start farming GB10, you're gonna be able to replace those runes pretty quickly. So this is just gonna be kind of your starter thing. And so you're gonna get a swift set uh, for your support monsters and you're going to max those runes. And so in the first two weeks of play, you also have uh, free rune removal. So you're going to be able to change out these runes. So don't don't worry about the cost of having to do that. Um, if you've been playing for a little while, you're still kind of stuck trying to get to GB10. Um, it may cost you a little bit extra to switch the runes, but by the time you're farming GB10, that's really not going to be that big of a deal. And it's going to be absolutely worth it because you're going to be able to make that mana back um, very quickly if you are able to do twice as many Giants runs in the same span of time. So, also, 
during the first two weeks, if you're uh, a beginning player, you're going to be able to get half price on all of the rune upgrades. So get every last rune up to plus 15. Um, at the very least, you're going to want your two, four, and six slots. Uh, but I would highly recommend all six slots being maxed at plus 15. And with these runes, you're going to be able to farm GB10. So this brings us to step number five, and that is to create a GB10 team. Now, in my uh, first 30 days playing, I probably dropped 4,000 crystals into energy refills just farming Giants B10 alone. So, for those of you that say, "Oh, well, I, I, I farm, I farm giants, but he never drops anything." Okay, well, how much did, how much did you farm? Uh, well, I, I, I spent a full hundred energy on it. Okay, well, that's not farming. Uh, you did a couple giants runs, but really, to get uh, an effective set of runes. Uh, you're going to need to spend a lot of crystals into energy refills. And uh, I know the kind of the pushback is that a lot of players like to do summons. So they like to spend their 75 crystals for a crystal summon, or uh, they buy the premium packs for 750 crystals. Don't do that. Reason being, if you're just wanting to summon monsters, 750 crystals worth of energy refills in Giants B10 will give you way more mystical scrolls than you would just buying a uh, premium pack for 750 crystals. And in addition to that, not only are you going to get more mystical scrolls just from farming the uh, giant, you're also going to be getting better runes as well. You're going to be getting mana to max those runes, and runes is the name of the game. You grind those runes, you max them, and that's going to help take you to the next level of your game. And so for a starter team, you're going to use your farmer. Uh, remember I said that you're going to want this as a water or wind unit. This is why. So uh, you take your farmer, which uh, if you di didn't pull any, uh, any other units that was able to do that, then your farmer is going to be Lapis. That's going to be your damage dealer for the giant starter giants uh, B10 team. The second unit you're going to want to do is you're going to want to build a Lauren. Get her to six stars as quickly as possible. That should be your second six star that you make. So build a Lauren, put her on the fastest swift set that you've got, and make her tanky. And so that means good HP and good defense. Uh, because just HP alone, you're still going to get one-shotted by that giant. So you're going to need some defense in there too. Uh, I would recommend at least plus 500 defense on your Lauren. Uh, next unit you're going to want to build is going to be Bella. Uh, you can farm this one in a uh, secret dungeon just like you can Lauren. And you're going to want to also 6 star your Bella as well. Um, this is optional depending on how tanky your runes are. The next unit you're going to want is you are going to want to get Shannon. And I guess it would help if I went in here and showed you some of these units. So Shannon, uh, two-star monster, reason she's really good is that her third skill, she puts up an attack buff and a defense buff for three turns, and that's gonna be on a four-turn cooldown once you have that skilled up. And so what that does is when that giant counterattacks, um, you're going to be able to survive that hit rather than just getting one-shotted. And so that's absolutely essential for this starter team. And then the last unit you're going to want to build is either going to be Konamiya or Lulu. So Konamiya, uh, both of these units are two stars, by the way. So Konamiya, um, his big thing is that on his third skill, he's going to remove all harmful effects from you, and you're going to do a little bit of a heal. Um, Lulu does something very similar as well. So if you pull Lulu... Um, then her third skill does the exact same thing removes two harmful effects from the allies uh, Gives you a little bit of a heal and a little bit a little bit of a bonus is that it grants immunity on any allies who have no harmful effects uh, The reason you might want to go with Konamiya uh, outside um, over Lulu uh, Might be that uh, you know you want to use Konamiya's second skill to boost up uh, one of your other units in order to uh, Maybe get some more damage off to push that attack bar back uh, but either one of these monsters are going to uh, fill the role very well. And so with just your farmer, Lauren, and Bella at six stars, this team's going to be able to auto GB10. And uh, my first runs were somewhere in the neighborhood of about a minute 45 to two minutes. And so you should be able to 
very comfortably farm GB10 and you're going to want to farm it like crazy. Um, and you're going to want to farm it until you have uh, a good six star rune set on everybody. Um, you're going to want to get one despair set. You're going to want to get uh, four swift sets. And uh, that's a bare minimum. Um, all six star runes. Um, the only exception to that is if you get a uh, five star legendary rune that just rolls exceptionally well. Um, you, you, can, you can run that. It's not ideal, but it can still be more efficient than running a six star blue rune. Um, so that is an option depending on what drops for you. Um, but uh, the general rule is if a rune drops for you and it's better and it can roll better than what you've already got equipped, roll it. And if it rolls better than what you have, equip it. Switch the rune. You always want to be looking for an upgrade. If you drop a rune and you're questionable on it, ask yourself, can this rune make any of my monsters better? If the answer is yes, roll it. If the answer is no, trash it. So there's no point in hanging on to runes if they're not if it if it can't make any of your monsters better. Um, so with that, um, you should be able to get a good rune set on all of your monsters, and you're gonna want to put all of those uh, two, four, six slots bare minimum to plus fifteen, and all of the other slots one, three, and five bare minimum at plus twelve. I would highly recommend that you put all six slots at plus 15, especially if you're in the first two weeks of the game and you've got that half off on uh, all of the rune upgrades, it's the best time to do it. You can, you can plus 15 all of your runes for a tremendously lower price, so just do it. Next, step six. After you have farmed giants tirelessly, and I mean probably dropping a thousand crystals into energy refills just on the giants alone, now it's going to be time to make your TOA normal 100 team. So for TOA, um, the team that I have run um, has been this. Uh, let me go ahead and put it in here just so you can get the visual. So the team that I recommend is that you run Lapis on Despair. You're gonna run Vertiheel. Um, he can be five stars. You can six star him if you feel like he's gonna be a little bit too squishy. Um, you're gonna want to run your Lauren. You're gonna want to run Fran if you're able to get one at this point. If not, Bella is perfectly fine. I'm gonna put Bella in there just so you can see it. And then the next monster you're gonna want to build is going to be the Fire Inagami Roke. Now this guy, um, this guy's awesome. So Roke, what he does in his uh, third skill, and this is my Violent Roke, uh, but his uh, second skill is going to team up with two allies. And so it may take a long time for you to, uh, to second awaken him, but it is definitely worth it. Um, on my brand new account, uh, I had to I had to second awaken him uh, just from floor three, uh, which did take a long time to do, uh, but it is definitely worth it. And you want to begin this process um, early on. So maybe if you get tired of running giants for a while, take a break, use up some of those uh, dimensional crystals, and, and uh, second awaken this rogue, because uh, this is going to be absolutely essential for this TOA 100 team that I've put together. And so with this team, kind of this, kind of the idea behind it and the synergy behind it is that, uh, is that Lapis is going to be on Despair, which means that every time she hits, she's got a chance to stun um, all of the enemy. Vertiheel is going to be on Swift. If you can manage a Vio set at this point, maybe you've gotten a lot of materials to uh, be able to craft runes, craft yourself a good violent set, and put it on him. It's going to be absolutely worthwhile. Um, if you can put a revenge set on him as well, that would be great. A revenge set on Lapis works incredibly well as, as well. Um, for Lauren, you're going to want to give her your second fastest Swift set. So on my uh, on my baby account, that uh, Swift set came out to about uh, plus 130 something speed. Uh, which allowed her to uh, run laps around most of the enemies that you're going to face here in the Trials of Ascension. Uh, the next unit that you're going to want to uh, build is the Bella. You're going to want to put her on a 
Swift set as well. Um, and then you're going to want to put your Roke on your fastest Swift set. And uh, on my baby account that happened to be at uh, about a plus 150, 160, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, but even in the plus 120, 130 range is still going to be sufficient to be able to uh, get you through TOA. And um, at this point, you're going to want to uh, improve the uh, accuracy of all of your units except Vertiheel to 45% or as close as you can get to it. If you can manage to hit it, um, 55 accuracy on Lauren, Bella, and, and, uh, and or Fran, um, that's going to be uh, a good way to uh, go as well because you're going to need that 55 accuracy later on for Dragons. Uh, but for now, just for TOA, you're going to want to run 45% accuracy, and that is so that you can land your debuffs consistently. Uh, because if you don't land the debuffs, if you're not, if Lauren's not pushing back that attack bar, if uh, Lapis isn't pushing back that attack bar, uh, if your uh, your Lauren and your Roke aren't defense breaking, uh, then you may run into some trouble throughout TOA. So you're going to want to get that ac that accuracy up. And also make sure that you are making your monster sufficiently tanky. And so again, that means uh, run some run HP on them and also run some defense. So if you don't use like a slot four or slot six defense percent rune, um, maybe try to get it out of the uh, subs in your runes. Uh, but just enough so that you can get to maybe eight, nine hundred defense. That's kind of a bare minimum that you're going to need in order to survive some of these hits from TOA. And so just by clearing TOA, you're going to get 700 crystals. Uh, you're going to get summoning stones. You're going to get a legendary scroll. You're going to get a light dark scroll. You're going to get three mystical scrolls, a five star rainbow mon. Um, the, the, the resources that you get from TOA normal is absolutely awesome. And there is no reason why, as soon as you can establish a GB10 team and farm your uh, your rune sets, that uh, the TOA shouldn't be the next step for you, just because you can get so many resources from it. And by the way, if you uh, eventually get to the point where you can do TOA hard, um, then you can double that amount of resources, and that's 1,400 crystals that you can get every month just by running TOA, which is absolutely incredible. Now, once you've cleared TOA 100, your next step, step number seven, is to transition to a GB10 speed team. So, in GB10 for the speed team, it's going to look uh, something like this. You're going to need to have, uh, you're going to need to have Naomi first of all, if you can pull her. If you can't pull a Naomi, then uh, you can fuse Arjun. Um, I don't even know if I have a Naomi on here. Um, another monster that you could build instead of Naomi would be a uh, crow. Crow is going to do something very similar to what Naomi does. Um, otherwise, you can also fuse an Arjun. He does the same thing as well. He does damage based on the number of uh, debuffs that are on the enemy. Uh, so regardless of whether you go Naomi or Arjun or Crow, uh, six star that monster, put a fast rune set on them, and make sure that uh, if it is some someone like Crow, um, or Arjun that you give them some accuracy as well, rune to 150 speed. Um, the second unit that you're going to want is you're going to want to put Lucian in there. So Lucian, if you can get him, is going to be the lead for this team. Now, if you if you can't get if you can't pull a Lucian, um, say you've used your summoning stones on a rotation that has Lucian, just can't pull him, or there's no opportunity to. He's not in the rotation. Um, then what you can do instead of Lucian is you can fuse a Sigmaris. And Sigmaris or Lucian, you're going to want to put your best crit damage set on that unit. And go all out attack, give them just enough tankiness so that they can survive a uh, hit counterattack from the giant. And uh, also rune that monster to at least 150 speed. And now at this point, you should be able to farm a Fran. Um, so you're going to want to put Fran in there if you can't, for whatever reason, maybe the, uh, event didn't line up and didn't give you enough, um, resources to pull a Fran. You can still run a Bella at this point. Um, that'll still be okay. Uh, but this is going to be kind of your, uh, safety net in the team. It's going to be a defense breaker 
in the case of Bella, and it's going to be an attack buff in the case of Fran, and they're also going to be your healer. And you're going to want to put that unit on Swift or Vio. Now the next units you want to put on your team is you have your damage healer from the first Giants 10, uh, B10 team that you created, uh, which if no one else is going to be your Lapis. And then finally, your last unit that you're going to want in here, and this is really kind of the backbone of the entire team, is you want to put that Lauren in there. And with this team, uh, you should be able to run a speed GB10 team and get it to about one minute. So that is where you're going to be at that point. Um, Giants, you're going to want to, again, run Giants like it's nobody's business. I would recommend a bare minimum of uh, dropping 2,000 crystals into energy refills every month. If you are participating in every area of the game, guild content, if you're doing your uh, rivals in arena daily, if you're doing your daily uh, challenges, um, you're going to get probably about 3,000 to 3,500 crystals every month just from that alone. And out of that, I would recommend dropping at least 2,000, if not 3,000 crystals into energy refills for Giants. And even now, I still run Giants all the time uh, because speed in this game is king. And uh, later on in the game, getting that first turn is absolutely essential in the uh, PvP aspect of the game. Uh, but in every aspect of this game, uh, with a couple of exceptions, speed is the way you progress. Speed is absolutely essential. If you don't have speed, you're not going to progress in this game. So that is step number seven. Transition to a GB10 speed team and farm like crazy. Step number eight is you're going to want to build a PvP unit. You'll get one unit here. Uh, so most players will begin their game by finding their shiny Nat 5 monster or their shiny new toy and they six star all of their toys and they neglect all of the monsters for progression. Well, this is the part where I give you the permission to, to uh, six star one of your toys or a uh, PVP unit. And for a recommendation, I would recommend you build Kali or Bulldozer. So those are going to be the two biggest ones that you're going to want. And the reason being, uh, let me scroll over to them. Um, the reason being, this is Kali here. Her uh, second skill does a dam um, does damage that ignores the enemy's defense. Um, hers is based on attack. Bulldozer's is based on defense. But either way, uh, having one of those two units is really going to help you maximize your effectiveness in guild content. Now, um, I know that uh, encouraging people to focus on PvP early on is, uh, is a mistake in the eyes of most people, uh, but hear me out. The reason I say build one unit for PvP purposes is because when you're in a guild battle and you're fighting against some of these uh, tryhards, you're going to run into some guilds that you may not be able to defeat. Say they have some very high defense tanky units. They've got a Fangyan in there. They've got a Velajul. I mean, what are you going to do with that? If you have just units for Giants B10 and TOA at this point, then you're not going to have a sufficient team in order to compete against that. And so what you want to do is you want to build one ignore defense damage unit in order to be able to take those down. And the reason I say to do that is because when you can maximize your effectiveness in guild content or at least improve that effectiveness early on, uh, you'll be able to farm more crystals and more GP for flags. So the crystals come in in siege uh, when you're able to defeat more compositions on the defense side. In both siege and guild battle, you're going to be able to farm more guild points. And uh, you're also going to be able to use these uh, guild points to, uh, at this point, begin investing in your flags. And so if you're not familiar with what those are, if you go into the guild shop and scroll over, uh, the flags, uh, these four items right here, what they do is uh, they will give you uh, a percent bonus to your skills based on the level of the flag and so you're going to want to begin putting one or two levels into each of these and it's going to help you through all of guild content and if that boosts your ability to do more in guild content it's also going to increase 
your uh, crystals that you're going to get from guild content, which is going to allow you to get more energy refills to do more farming of runes. And so all of this is to go right back to be able to invest more into farming runes. So that's step number eight. Step number nine is now we're gonna go and we're gonna build a Dragons B10 team. So in Dragons, uh, we're gonna use almost exclusively the same units that we did before. So in uh, Dragons, what you're gonna want is uh, you're gonna want to use your Bella. And if, at this point, if you have not second awakened Bella, now would be a good time to do so. So you're gonna have a Bella. Her role is going to be the defense break and to be a stripper when um, that dragon puts up his immunity. Because you don't want that immunity up, you wanna be able to defense break him, you wanna be able to push back that attack bar so he doesn't get a turn. And so that's gonna be absolutely crucial for you to be able to strip. And this is where that 55 accuracy comes in. You need to, you need to hit that max of 55% if you're going to be able to strip and defense break um, consistently. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get two or three turns in a row, you're gonna miss the strip, and that dragon is just going to slowly tear you apart, or you're gonna get a much slower run, and you don't want that. It's just gonna get dangerous. So, second awaken your Bella, um, and make sure you give her 55 accuracy. Uh, the next monster you're gonna wanna do is uh, you're gonna want to six star your Verta Heal. All right, and my Verta Hill. Uh, so you want him in the lead position, and he he gives a 28% speed lead. And so what Verta Hill is going to do is he's going to be the source of turn cycling for your team. So every time he attacks, if you have 100% crit rate, he is going to give you 40% of your attack bar for your entire team. So every time he takes a turn, everybody gets uh, everybody's going to be taking turns. So he's absolutely essential to making sure that your team stays um, stays nice and healthy to make sure that the dragon is pushed back is consistently stripped uh, he's just going to be an essential part of this team uh, the next team member that you're going to want is you're going to want sigmaris so if you haven't fused sigmaris by this point you're going to want to do so sigmaris um, is going to deal your damage based on the enemy's max hp and he's going to be your primary damage dealer for this team um, the next monster you're going to want, and at this point you should have enough resources to pull her, is you're going to want to pull Fran. And Fran's role in this is going to be simple. Um, she's going to be your attack buffer. She's going to be a source of immunity so that those dots don't land. Um, she is somewhat of a cleanse in her second skill, although I wouldn't really rely on that. Um, and then her first skill is going to push the attack bar back and defense or and attack break, which is going to make the da make the dragon do a lot less damage if he does happen to take a turn and hit you. And then uh, the next monster you're going to want. And by the way, um, Fran and Bella are kind of interchangeable here, so you're going to want one of those two units. So uh, just to clarify, you don't need Bella and Fran. You want Bella or Fran. Um, so I would choose uh, Bella in this case um, over Fran if you feel like your uh, other stripper, who's going to be Lauren, uh, isn't sufficiently stripping the immunity off. Otherwise, you can just run uh, Fran, that's what I do, and it seems to work just fine. So you've got your Vertihil, you've got your Fran, you've got Sigmaris. The next unit you're going to want in the team, as I was alluding to earlier, is going to be your Lauren. She's going to be the backbone again. She is going to be your stripper for the immunity. She is going to push back the attack bar of that dragon. And Vertihil is going to make sure that she gets plenty of turns to do it. And then your last monster that you're going to have is going to be that Roke that you built for Trials of Ascension. And that Roke, again, is going to pull your, uh, your other units and uh, so if he pulls Vertihil, then uh, you're going to get 40% attack bar. If he pulls Lauren, then Lauren's going to reduce her cooldown, and also she's going to push back that attack bar. 
he pulls back if she if he pulls Fran, you're gonna get the attack bar reduction and attack break. If he pulls Sigmaris, you're gonna get extra damage. And so Roke is kind of like the uh, support that kind of pulls everybody else with him and just helps everybody else do more of what they do best. And so with this team right here, you're probably going to land at about a 2-minute Dragon's B10 team. Which will be sufficient to begin farming a few Vio sets. Now, step number 10, and this is kind of the last step to enter into mid-game, is we are now going to build a raid team. And primarily, you're probably going to be in raid uh, 4 for the time being. Now, in raid 4... What we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to kind of put together the team on here. Uh, so let's make it a private one so that nobody joins. And we're going to look at Raid 4. And on Raid 4, the team that you're going to want, um, you're going to want to build, first of all, a Fire Panda, Zhang Fei. And he's going to be your frontline monster. And you're going to six-star him. You're going to use him for the defensive leader skill. And uh, you're going to want to make him as beefy as possible, especially with a very high defensive stat. And that is so that when the uh, boss makes the uh, attacks, uh, he's going to take a lot less damage. Um, I believe his uh, Crush of Doom is based on the amount of defense that you have. And uh, so the next monster that you're going to want is you're going to want your Cleanser. So if you haven't built either one of these by now and you decided to go Veramos instead of Konamiya or Lulu, you're going to want to build a Konamiya or a Lulu for this team. And uh, six star that monster. And on this one, you're going to have a priority of your uh, very first Vio set uh, or your best Vio set. Make them fast, make them tanky. And the reason you want him on Vio is because if everybody is stunned, you want a chance that he's going to be able to take another turn um, and then cleanse the stun off of everybody else along with the uh, plethora of other debuffs that are going to be on you. So you're going to want Konamiya. The next monster that you're going to want is you're going to want to put um, Bella on the front line. And at this point, the only new unit that you're going to be putting in is this Fire Panda. So you're going to be able to recycle a lot of the teams that you've already put together. Uh, so you're going to have that Fire Panda and Bella on the front line, Konami on the back line. The next monster that you're going to want is you're going to want to put in your Lauren. And so with the Lauren, same idea as the other places, you're going to want to uh, have her there to push back the attack bar, the defense break and also to be a source of heal block. So this is going to be very important here. Um, that heal block is going to prevent that uh, dragon from healing up every time he counterattacks when you do 15 turns. Uh, because what he does is he strips all of your buffs and he will heal based on the number of buffs that he strips from you. And so the heal block is going to prevent him from doing that. The next monster that you're going to want to put on your team is going to be Fran. And Fran is going to be your uh, is going to be another healer. She's going to be a, uh, a source of immunity. Um, and she's also going to be an attack buff. Now, another monster that you could do in the place of Fran, if you wanted to build another monster, um, would be Colleen. So, if you wanted to take the time and build another monster, build a Colleen. And Colleen is going to be able to attack break, she's going to be able to heal block, and she's going to also uh, heal your entire team and give them an attack buff. So she's a very good monster to build for Raid 4. Uh, but if you don't want to build another monster at this point, I know you've built a lot of them, uh, then you can just go Fran. And then the last monster that you're going to want to put in is going to be your damage dealer. And if you haven't uh, been able to build uh, any of the other ones, uh, you're going to want to build Naomi or Arjun. And uh, I don't have either one of those built on this, uh, but we're going to just... Uh, actually, you know what? I may have a four-star Naomi somewhere in here sitting around. I do. She's not even second awakened or anything. I just happen to have her. Um, but you will want to put in your Naomi. You'll want to put in your Arjun. If you have Crow, um, this would be a great place for Crow because he can brand. Um, but all three of those units are going to do damage based on the number of debuffs on the on the boss and With raid that boss is going to have probably five or six debuffs on him at any given time And so with this team 
um, all of them at six stars, you should be able to very easily go through raid four and grind some, uh, get some grindstones and some enchanted gems for your runes. And by the time you get to this point in Raid 4, you're going to be in the mid-game, uh, the very beginning of mid-game. And a lot of options are going to be opened up to you once you're able to do this. And so it's very important that you do, do it in this order, because if you try to do things out of order, you're going to kind of make the same mistakes that I did. And, uh, those, and the mistakes were that I tried to invest in PvP right from the start, and when I went into the, and when I went to go do PvP, um, I just wasn't effective. I wasn't able to uh, take down most teams, and uh, quite frankly, it took me eight months before I even cleared Giants B10. And so it took me a long time to develop my account. And uh, as I said earlier, um, in Arena, I wasn't even investing in my towers. I wasn't really, uh, I wasn't really farming in there. I was a try hard, but trying hard doesn't work very well uh, when you're up against a bunch of other tough defenses that you have no way to beat because your runes suck. And so, um, you know, I, I was in there, and when, and what glory points I did get, you know, I, I was investing in scrolls, which is probably the worst thing you could possibly buy. And so I just want to kind of help you guys not make the same mistakes that I did. And if you do it in this order, uh, you're going to be able to progress through your game and your account in a very rapid rate to the point where, you know, within a month span or if you're a more casual player uh, within, you know, two or three months, you're going to be able to go from, you know, struggling to just take down single uh, six star monsters in guild battle to being able to take down full teams of six star monsters and you're going to be able to be a lot more effective in the game and obviously as you uh, are developing your account you're six starring more monsters and you're concentrating more on pvp once you get to the mid game um, then obviously you're going to also have some of these other units to make some of these uh, giants and dragon runs a lot faster and so it's really going to go all go back to having those good runes because that really is the foundation for everything in this game. You grind those runes and you do everything in your power to make your monsters stronger and the PvP aspect of this game will fall right into place and you won't have to worry about it. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. hope you found it helpful. If you found this helpful, please do me a favor and subscribe to me. Hit that like button down below. I would really, really appreciate it. It helps me so much. And uh, if you have any suggestions on uh, how you progressed your account early on and maybe some other unique monsters that you used in order to develop your account, drop it down in the comments below. Help the community out and uh, let's all let's all join together in helping and encouraging one another to be the best players that we can be. That's going to do it for this video. Until next time, peace out.